I know the World Series of Poker is, um, the Game 3 is happening tomorrow in San Francisco. I don't think the rain will um, head over and affect that area, but maybe by Saturday the rain will. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. You know, uh, it's the, the beginning of a new year. People are out there putting out some forecasts for the new year for the for the comic book industry. And uh, one of those is Rob Salkowitz. Uh, he's kind of made his name, uh, you know, talking about comics and, and tech. That's kind of his, his niche. Uh, he, he's, he's made a, a lot of predictions based on uh, San Diego Comic-Con and, and future trends for for the comic industry and a lot of them come come true you know he even uh, wrote a book that that the great stan lee uh, said that he learned a lot of stuff about the industry so he, he's an interesting person you know um and and he had a, a forecast out and i wanted to bring on comic person you know to talk about some of his forecasts for 2020 and what we think about uh about about it what he is prognosticating for the next year yeah it's uh well glad to be here thanks for inviting me on and it's it's interesting to I mean, I do a lot of predictions myself, and I think if you're going to do predictions, then you're putting yourself out there, and you're going to be wrong a lot of the time, and that's just the nature of the game, and I think it's cool to see people make guesses and, and come up with their views of what's going on, and it's always something to learn. Whether you agree or not, there's always something to learn in predictions. Yeah, you know, he, um, I think about 10 years ago, he, he made a lot of predictions about the, the, the rise of digital uh, influence of comics and how people are going to use that to consume comics. Has it really uh, played out exactly the way you thought about? So you are going to see that definitely in these forecasts, but you ready to go over these? Let's do it. Yeah, let's go through these. All right. The first one is at least one mobile first digital comics platform will post some staggering growth numbers. I'm going to go false on this one. What do you think? Yeah, definitely false. I mean, so keep in mind, this is 2020. If he was saying in the 2020 to 2030, the next decade, then I'm probably on board with what he's saying. But next year, it, look, I mean, it's impossible for it to go this way. And I have a, you know, people know I have a lot of experience pushing what we call merging platforms. And mobile is one of those where you're trying to push uh, content into something new. And mobile, the, the challenge is people make this prediction. A lot of people say this year after year after year. I mean, people have been saying, this is going to happen since 2008. I think there was a panel at Comic-Con where this was being said. The, the challenge is that in the U.S., in Western kind of society, the mobile device has not been able to catch people for reading things, whether it's digital books, Apple has tried, but there's like a lot bigger names than any one comic publisher has tried hard to make magazines and books work on a mobile device. And the problem is they just, they don't. The Western audience doesn't consume it that way. And there's a, there's a very simple reason for that. It's the Western audience tends to drive and tends to be more mobile themselves. Because people make these assessments looking at places like Japan, where content is consumed on a digital mobile device all the time. And it's very popular there and it, it's, it's grown there and it's, it's leading there. But that audience is primarily not in cars. They're riding trains. There's a lot of stationary time. And so it fits that dynamic much better. And there's a lot of other little reasons there too. Western audience isn't there. So in Western audience, you're also relying on tablet usage. And the other you know, fact is that tablets aren't widespread. As much as Apple would like to have everyone have an iPad, they're not all over the place. They, they're just, they're expensive. So there's a, there's a price hurdle and a tech hurdle and a, just a mobility hurdle that people have to get over for digital to really grow on these platforms. And that's, that's just an uncomfortable fact. Now, I, I do believe that will change. I do believe that will change absolutely. Sorry, so my phone and this interview are connected. Thank you, uh, telemarketer. Um, anyway, I'm disrupting your video. That's a, that's a, there's a problem with how these things are, are blocking growth of, of digital. The other question that has to be answered here is how are people going to get paid? So right now there's simply not a lot of money in traditional publishing and there's not a clear answer for how digital is going to, to give money to creators. If you go all the way to work. No, it's not, not here, not this way. We've, we've blown through it. You see things like Apple Arcade and a lot of other services who are basically telling you, hey, we're going to give you a subscription so you get out of ads and you get out of being interrupted, you get out of in-app purchases, and you see this continual race to the bottom of those kinds of micro-purchases and other things. So that's, that's a, that's a, the, there's a bunch of obstacles in the way of this happening. Now, that said, I said at the beginning, if we're taking a 10-year view, then 
yes, I, I agree that in the coming decade, this will break and burst and we will start seeing stuff go down this way. But today, today, no. Today, I mean, people and how they deal with their mobile device and get interrupted with technology, just like what happened in an interview with my, uh, my phone going off, that's, uh, that's something we're still tackling. Well, I think of this as our segment, Perch, but let's hit on to the, to the next uh, forecast. Buying patterns of independent bookstores and comic specialty stores will start to converge. Uh, I think they already have, and I agree with this one to a point. I agree, too, and I, I, do, I also think they have converged. I don't think this is really a, uh, uh, a big prediction. I think the, the indie bookstore and the comic specialty stores have been combining for some time, and I think you will still see consolidation there where indie bookstores will get more and more, primarily in graphic novels. Comic specialty stores will start to carry more books and things. This is already happening. Every comic store is trying to find other ways to find revenue. You'll see the convergence going on. What's not in this um, this thing is like, yeah, there will be some some convergence for cities like Portland or New York or Boston. Um, there's not enough business to support, you know, duplication. So we're going to see converge and we're going to see removal. I mean, they're going to converge and shrink. Uh, and then I think that's that's probably normal and natural as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see that all over the U.S. You know, the the old yeah. used record store. You know, all of a sudden started having your your cannabis supplies. You know, and they started bringing out other stuff. You know, to expand the expand their customer growth. And I definitely see that for both uh, for specialty bookstores. It's funny you said. Uh, so up here in the Seattle area, we have our first cannabis comic shop, and oh. that, see that coming together. I, I, I mean, I don't know. You want you want those people coming in? And, well, I mean, I'm joking. You can't uh, light up inside the shop, but you don't you don't want sleepy people in your store. That's that's counterproductive. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm joking. All the snacks out. I just sound like a boomer with my description of of pop. But oh well. <laughs> okay, his third uh, forecast. I don't I don't agree with this one, but we'll see what you have to say. Comic style media will play an important role uh, in the 2020 political campaign. Yeah, no. you know, if he's talking about like comic strips and, and stuff being put on social media that are funny, that are making fun of candidates, okay. But I'm thinking about comic book style media, and I'm yeah. going to say no. Yeah, I, I, I agree completely. I mean, maybe the devil's in the details. He says comic style, and maybe the operative word there is style. But absolutely, we're going to see more cartoons, more memes. I mean, I, I mean, you could say memes fit into this, and if that's what we're saying, then yeah, there will be all kinds of memes. We will be so sick of the entire process by the time November rolls around with, with how we're hammered with this information. Um, I, I mean, I think we'll see plenty of that. I don't think we'll see much in actual comic books. I, I mean, I think it would be insane and suicide. And I know that Marvel, at least at some level on the editorial side, realizes that they've got to cut down on their political stuff. For the simple sake of the matter, they, they need comics to be more evergreen. So they, they can't go all in on this. The last paragraph in this prediction around this is providing a windfall for creators, packagers, and agents. I, I just, I don't see, I, you know, no political campaign is going to spend parts of that money making comic books now. And it's, that's not going to happen. Are they going to fund people to make memes? I mean, sure. Will those people be in Russia? Maybe. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting take. I, I definitely uh, don't believe that one. So what's interesting is, you know, devils do, you know, suck in a, a fairly substantial amount of money, you know, promoting their AOC in the Freshman Force comic book. And they actually lost money. And, she, you know, she's one of the most recognizable political figures in the entire United States. You know, it's kind of like I don't think the numbers always add up, you know, that that politics are a great way to sell comic books or comic books are a great way to sell politics. I don't either. I mean, we've talked to Brett Smith a bit on this topic in the past, and he points out Clinton Cash and some of the things they did there. And I, there's definitely a market, and I think there's a, a big growth opportunity for longer term politics and for shaping kind of ideologies and other things. I definitely believe that's true. But if we're talking about the 2020 political campaign, which is what this prediction is for, there's mm -hmm. lots and lots of evidence. The AOC example you gave is a, is a great one. Um, if people are going to want a temporary kind of injection of politics or maybe laugh at it or whatever it happens to be, they're going to get that from memes. They're not going to go and buy a comic book for that fix. I mean, just think of the process. Somebody's saying, I want to go read something about AOC or I want to go read something about Bernie Sanders or I, I want to make fun of Bernie Sanders. Either direction you want to go in, 
are you more likely to go on the web and search for funny cartoons for Bernie Sanders? Or are you going to go like, I wonder where my local comic shop is. I know I'll get in the car, drive over there, see if they have the Bernie Sanders comic, purchase it, take it back to my house, read it. That makes no sense. And it will not happen. And that's, that's the AOC example. It's like a lot of the bits in that comic probably would have worked really well as just memes. Of course, there's not a business model behind it, but when you package it up as a comic book, who's going to want that? I mean, does, does, do AOC fans think that it's a collector's item? No, nobody, nobody thinks that way. So here's one that I, I think that you are between the two of us, you're uniquely uh, qualified to, to give some insight and information on his fourth forecast is Japanese publishers will mount a concerted systematic effort against pirate uh, scan scanlation sites. Uh, Yes. So, so there's truth that yes and no. So I think that, first of all, the way uh, Japanese publishers and that business in general handy co handle copyright is much different from how the West sees it. So it, it's not like, you know, they're, they're not like Disney. There is a different way that they protect their copyrights and, and work on piracy and all the rest. I think there will be a, I would insert the word slow. There will be a slow, systematic effort against pirate sites. I think you will see that. I do think that there's some desire on the Japanese publisher side to you know, keep control of their properties. I do think there's a, a concern that it's, it's branching out and they're losing IP and they, there's not the psychology of at all of, hey, we should just let this happen because it's good marketing for our books. That's definitely not how the publisher view it or the artists. There's a, there's a strong sense of pride and protection on those brands. Um, that said, I think their desire to really go attack kind of the, the wide market of how US piracy happens and how these scanlation sites uh, work. I mean, they're, they're not going to go deep and anything they do is going to be incredibly slow. Japanese publishers typically do not go on big mounted assaults on the long tail of content. You know, so, you know, we went over his, his four, four forecasts for the year. We th I think he's, you know, kind of like one and a half out of four. I, I think is the convergence thing is, is definitely going to happen. Uh, you know, I think the, the Japanese like crackdown on piracy to an extent, but but not quite as uh, large as he did. But I, I do want to say I, I don't want people to think I'm bagging on Rob Southwest here. I really appreciate his enthusiasm. There's not a lot of people out there coming, you know, uh, and reporting on the comic book industry from his perspective. And you know, he gets those articles into Forbes.com. You know, he's putting up uh, like interesting takes that we get to talk about on ICV2.com. So I do appreciate that, and I, I respect him. You know, like I said, Stan Lee has a quote saying that he learned something about comics in his book. So he certainly accomplished a lot. I don't want people to think that we're just here to bag on on the guy. You know, he's he's making some some big bold uh, forecasts that I I don't think he was trying to play it safe on these. No, I, I completely agree. And as well said, I mean, Rob is I mean, he's got a history in this industry, and he researches his things. And and like I said at the beginning, when you put out predictions, you need to be bold. You know, said put something out there people can talk about, like we have here. And and I mean, he. It's not like he's tossing out stuff with no backing to support his point. He's putting out a prediction. He's doing that. And I, I give him credit for that. I think digital in general is something that people miss year after year after year. And, mm -hmm. and lots of people miss. And I think the core to that is twofold. One, they, they, they don't really understand what goes on in Japan and why it's fundamentally different from the West and how it's hard to move over. And then two, they get a little bit too optimistic about how fast things change. Now, digital change and transformation happens really quickly in lots of different areas, but human behavior doesn't. And the reason why the iPhone was so successful is that it took the technology kind of away. The technology was an enabler of things humans wanted to do, well, buy a movie ticket while they were in their car or anything like that. Comics, you, you still don't have that connection of people psychologically wanting to read a comic on their phone in the West. And until that moment happens, all the digital growth won't really matter. And that's that's key to kind of a lot of this stuff. But Rob is, is a smart guy, great guy, nothing but respect. So any disagreement with him is done out of respect. Mm -hmm. Oh, and just to follow up on like, you know, I have to use comiXology a lot, you know, because I'm in the Philippines. There, there isn't a, 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 a shop here. So I have to use digital. And I'll tell you right now, it does not function well. It's not, it's not, it's not a good interface. The way that they slide around and everything, and sometimes it'll skip panels. So there's a lot of work to do on the digital front. There is, and it's um, and it comes down to money. That there's not enough money in 
Comixology, I mean, Comixology is owned by Amazon. Amazon, very rich company. Comixology is a division that is is definitely an orphan. I, I know many people personally who work in that division. They're, I mean, they're in my backyard here, and it's it's the unknown division by and large. And and why? Because there's not money. If mm-hmm. it was making lots of money, you would see these things improve dramatically. But until you see something really, somebody really put a concerted effort and unfortunately cash behind it, it's going to continue to be this way. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining me today, Perch. It was a lot of fun going over some of these forecasts. And uh, I always love talking about the comic book industry with me. You're, you're just a wealth of knowledge and uh, just a really great perspective. I always learn something. Uh, thank you very much. It's, it's great talking to you, too. It's, it's, it's very mutual. All right. Later, buddy. Take it easy. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.